Lord this morning. All I see, you are all I see. All I see is you. to dance to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just want you to shake your body. I will give God all the praise for all he has done for us this season. Inside of me, inside of me. 
and the urine is usually dark brown in color. It stops for some time and later reoccurs. As pastor asks everyone with any form of sickness to lay their hands on the affected area. I did lay my hand and pastor prayed and to the glory of God I have not experienced that pain while urinating. Give the Lord a shout of glory. Hallelujah. Our God does wonders in our midst. Praise the Lord. We are from brother Samuel Onoja. He said I was diagnosed of hepatitis B since 2023 which is five months ago i usually get tired easily and lose the zeal to do things because i was always getting tired pastor asks us to declare the word over our health finances career etc i obeyed and declared god's word over my health and as i did over time during the course of service i began to feel strength come upon me and felt life gush down through my spine. Hallelujah. I give God all the praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And finally, we have from Sister Uchi Nawanko from our church in Oka Anambra State. She said, Hallelujah. I am exceedingly grateful to God for his deliverance in my life in this past week. He saved me from abduction. I usually go to purchase my goods for business using night trips with a particular driver who will place my goods on top of his vehicle. For some reason, we are scheduled to move 10, 11 p.m. when he called and told me that he will move by 1 a.m. instead. I agreed since he will be the one driving and needed to rest before moving. On our way, we approached a particular checkpoint on a bushy stretch of road, we discovered abandoned vehicles. One looked to have been involved in an accident and was overturned on his side. Furthermore, we saw about 10 army officers there lying prostrate on the ground and some sitting as if they were scared and couldn't move. I was a bit scared, but we drove by without being stopped. On the return journey, we observed that the army officers had now been replaced by policemen. After returning home, the driver called me up the next day to let me know that those vehicles we are seen we are left there when kidnappers abducted the passengers. Hallelujah. Apparently, it had taken place an hour or so before we passed there. Praise God. Meaning that if we had left earlier that day, we would have been there at the time of the attack but at the moment i knew it could have only been god who preserved me hallelujah from satan's plan hallelujah praise the lord amen he said all things work together for our good hallelujah praise god it's usually 10 to 11 that was the normal day but for some reason that day the driver had to change time hallelujah and she didn't react praise god that was god working on her behalf even without her knowledge hallelujah all that become of her praise god hallelujah but god sent his deliverance praise god let's rise to our feet and give god praise we have testimonies of people that we are healed pastor always tell us you cannot tell a man that is sick he has been healed except he himself tells you because he's the one having that pain praise the lord and for them to testify with their own mouth to the glory of the name of the lord it shows indeed that god is faithful in our midst let us lift up our hands and say lord thank you the truth is every one of us are living testimonies hallelujah of god's faithfulness to be alive in the land of the living is a proof of god's faithfulness hallelujah let's lift up our hands and thank god as a family as a ministry as a church as individuals lord we are grateful thank you faithful father thank you for honoring your words in our midst go ahead and thank you for all that he has done for you hallelujah as you have desire and expect for more in the name of the lord jesus christ lord we give you praise thank you precious holy father in jesus name Praise God. Hallelujah. It's time for us to make intercession.
song. Wherever we are, let's just lift up our hands and to worship the Lord in the Holy Ghost. Masuto brada mandishida mandra hendra hida basta bash. Masundo pregedesh libra dundo zonto brodo 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 bosh. Ramande liga bando huse amande shala basta. E koto brodo bondo zoto brodo bondo zila brande shida mandra hila. Rakata la brada bosi akata kapayash. The Lord has mandated us this season to intercede for the church, to intercede for ministers and believers everywhere. So wherever you are, just lift up your hands and you need to take charge. Masuta libra do jaman de hila banda raga dos rekete liya do jada mando ziya kabahashta. Firstly, we're going to pray against every form of attack against the church. Likato zabashta bila. We declare that no evil attack against the church shall prevail. In the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and pray everywhere. Rakate kaparado shadamande hila barazi kabash. Kale bradando ziya kataba ikash. Eko paragado ziya repadandi. Eko toporado ziya takata koria kapaila. Every attack of the devil against the church shall not prevail. In the name of Jesus Christ, likparaza teki ado ziya takai. Remenondo ziya kataka baya. Attack targeted on the church this season. We put a stop to it. In the name of Jesus, raketa rabea. Rimando ziya lakati ado ziya baya. E kanda la brada katozia, rabadozia la mande ki papa dia da kuria, le kata kapa, le kata pata kapashka, ola krozieta, mazuka te para, rekete pashande hila, rakata kabaya, e kondo prokotoza, e koto protoboza, e kopro krosa, every scheme that's been put together to silence in the church, we put a stop to it. In the name of Jesus, right? Le koto prakataye, e le koto Every plan to wipe out the church, we put a stop to it. In the name of Jesus, right? We overthrow every of your evil agenda. La katosia katia, you are like yanda he. Rakata kataka, rapa papa shaka takaye. The gate of hell will prevail as a church. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Eparosa, la kataka takaya, and la katakoria kapaya. Open your mouth and pray for the preservation of the work of Christ in this nation. In La Coria Mande and Le Kata Kabaya, more than ever before, we see the impact of the gospel in the life of me. More than ever before, we see the impact of the gospel in this nation. Le Kata Ye, Rabala Taka Ye, Le Kata Prakata, and Le Kata Baila, Rabosia Kalabande. Ye Bashanda la Kata Kabaya, for the clear that this nation is open, for the spread of the gospel of Christ. We the name of Jesus Christ, Ye Zata Coria Baya. Rakata kabaye, ekoto prakataya, the 
Jesus. Can everybody hear me clearly? Lift up your hands and worship him. Can I have a little more volume on this? Hallelujah.
run I'll leave my hands I'll leave my voice Just wave our hands and thank the Lord and worship Him. Wonderful testimonies that came from last service. Praise God. Someone delivered from kidnappers. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. And I just, um, I'll read this one. He said, I've been experiencing pains while urinating, and the urine is usually dark brown in color. It stops sometime and later happens again. Now, um, this same brother met me after service and said, Pastor, actually, for some time now, probably he just wanted to adjust it for service sick. He said he's been urinating and urinating blood along with his urine. And I want every man who is experiencing um, urinating incessantly because the Lord is healing someone now. 
everyone with a kidney or bladder malfunctioning. I want you to put your hand there now. As I read out these testimonies, be them infection, build them a weakness of an organ that's malfunctioning. Or a dead organ. Right this minute, they're going to be healed. Even as I make utterances. So I want to place your hand there now. Jesus, you are great and mighty. Can you play that when I speak? Jesus, you are great and mighty. You are laudable. You, O Lord of all. This is where the ushers and why are we having people sit disorderly. Jesus, you are great and mighty. You, O Lord of all. The brother that just came in should fill that space up now. You, O Lord of all. I call you King of glory. Just play that thing the way I said you play. Don't play slow. You are Lord of play with the right key and the peace. That's still not the peace. You're slow. Play to the right peace. Hallelujah. Wave your hands. I said everyone who has issue with urinating, diabetes, um, kidney stone, whatever, or bladder issue, place your hand there now. Make it a little faster. Since 2022, I've been experiencing pains while urinating and the urine is usually dark brown in color. And I said, this brother actually met me after service. I said, Pastor, actually I've been having blood along with my urinating for some months now. He said, it stops for some time and later happens again. As Pastor asks everyone with any form of sickness to lay their hands on affected areas, I did lay my hand and after Pastor prayed to the glory of God, I've not had the experience of pain while urinating. Hallelujah. The blood actually stopped. Praise God. He was at my office after service. I was diagnosed, this was last Sunday, while in service like this, so as I'm reading this, that healing is taking place in your body now. And you that have been constantly urinating, you'll find that all through the service, you will not stand for urinating. I was diagnosed of hepatitis B since 2023, okay, which is five months ago. It says, I get tired easily and I lost the zeal to do things because I was always getting tired quickly. Pastor asked us to declare the word of our health. Finances and career obeyed and declared God's word over my health. And as I did over time during the service, is this person here, Samuel Onuja? He said, over time during the service, I began to feel the strength come upon me and I've felt life in my spine. Give Jesus a shout of praise. That's my anointing is here this morning and higher. Hallelujah. I hope um, praise God. Are we here? Those of you that laid hands on your bladder or your kidney, including fibroid. Place your hand there now. I curse those diseases to die now. I curse them with death. That organ, that tissue, that muscle that has been under that plague I command it to get out of your bodies now in the name of Jesus. 
I command that growth to melt out now. That infection, vaginal infection, I command it to die and pass out now. I command in the name of Jesus that every weak organ and cell of your body be restored to normalcy now in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, I rebuke you from their bodies. I rebuke you from the blood. I rebuke you from their muscles, their organs and tissues and cells of their bodies. Be cleansed and made whole now in the name of Jesus. Give him praise everywhere. The diseases are gone. And they are gone for good. In the name of Jesus Christ. And when you observe yourself, you will notice you won't find it today again. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. You see, it's awesome what God is doing and also very important that we recognize that God is doing something in our midst. Praise God. I said praise God. Hallelujah. Are you still here with me? We started um, a series some time ago and I told you we we're going a little step further from perspective to how to make prophecies work for you. Praise God. I said praise God. And we saw from the service of last Sunday that hepatitis died by reason of that word. Praise the Lord Jesus. I said, praise the Lord Jesus. Very important that we pay attention to the things that we are taught. And candidly speaking, I want to thank the devotional team for today's publication. I love it so much because a lot of people don't know the truth. But a lot of people think they know the truth. Praise God. I said, praise God. It was of in a generation where <clears throat> A ministry or ministering I think that's a better word has become a pulpit thing it's very important that we understand at certain times what the word of God expects us to know and how to relate with the pulpit. Praise God. Very important. Hallelujah. Now, we're dealing with prophecies and how to make it work for you. And uh, it dawned on me that some of us might not even understand fully what prophecy is. Though my emphasis this morning is not to give you the full definition of prophecies, but it is also important that we understand what it is to some extent and what it is not. Are you see here? Because we are so fooled by what we see on television, by anointed men of God, um, and so the abuse of prophecy is we need to grow. Are you see here? First and foremost, I want us to look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 12.
14. Only you. Sakli actos koshko vra ila prax. Ikus ela actovish ka ila fas koshkojo. Sira ars kebo sabaktios. Predino octo farit. Sakiza facto prias koshkojo vila. Ingosko kraktia brax. Zinaraktio zo vila. Kesto zo shvra ectesiandis. I wanted to pay attention to what I say. But these words that are coming to you at such a time are precious words. In a season of deception and wickedness, you've got to know the truth. Because I've said in my word that the truth will set free. And I've gotten you to a place where you will learn my truth and be transformed by it if you pay attention to it to understand it. And to do it, says the Lord. Then he said, let your focus be my word, which you hear from this place, says the Spirit of God. Wave your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Now, what just happened? What was that? Huh? In the class of scriptures, what just happened by the Holy Spirit? I didn't even know it was going to happen. Huh? Okay. We talk about... Now, I'm not just talking generally. I'm talking about what does the scripture define what just happened? Two actions or two spiritual manifestations just took place. What do we call them? What was the first thing I did just now? No. I spoke in other tongues. What was the next thing I did after speaking in other tongues? I interpreted the tongues. So I said, according to the scriptures, one of the two practices that just took place. The first was speaking in other tongues. You see, you know why I love the Holy Spirit of God? He has enabled me so that in several kind of environments, He manifests Himself so I can make it, it makes it easy for me to make the people understand. Are you see here? The Bible talks in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that there are diverse operations of the Spirit of God, which the King James actually called gifts of the Spirit. Are you see here? It talks about prophecy, it talks about the gift of other tongues and interpretation of tongues. And then in chapter 14, where I said we should read about um, the confusion that comes in is because. Christians or ministers, actually the Orthodox brethren, never pay attention to details. Now, when I make a statement or a bold statement and back it up with examples, okay, or references, the references gives credence or the the pointer to what the object or subject matter really is. True or false? True or false? Now. When he talked about speaking in tongues or other tongues, he said there should be in that gathering someone who should interpret. Now, it says when you pray in tongues. Because that's where the first confusion comes in. And then he begins to give you examples of people or, or examples of um, instruments that could make sense to some people and to the general public foolishness. But the essence is the fact that those instruments were instruments of communication. Are you see here? So he said, a trumpet. The word they actually meant is a military bagel, a beagle. For example, you can be in the barracks and you hear certain kind of alarms, you're an officer, right? There are certain kind of codes where they want to summon you guys amongst everybody and they want you to know that this one is for your time, for your own um, class of officers. 
you can even have other officers around you in your own um what they call it now armed force right but your own class of soldiers when you hear certain kind of codes aa1 aa1 every other person thinks that's rubbish coming everyone who understands that aa1 means step back and shoot takes their guns and begin to shoot why because it is communicating as a signal So, the people who are trained to understand that sound and its meaning, respond. Are you seeing here? So, he talked about the sounding symbols, if nobody's getting it. He said the same way, if you're speaking in tongues and nobody's understanding it, that means at the time of your speaking, you're actually addressing the people, not God alone. So, that's where the ignorance comes in. And that's what just happened. Imagine if I had spoken in tongues. I, I've seen certain ministers do that from archbishop to bishop. You know, um, there are times when ministering, you actually speak in tongues. You just get fired up yourself. It charges you up to the next level. It's a different thing. Some just because they saw bishop this do it and archbishop this or pastor this do it, they just come. Rakato kobo. Now, if you sit in the seat of interpretation, you know that this was a message. But the man knows nothing. He just finished bang, 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 and goes back to what he was saying before. That's a lost message. Are oh, you see here? That's a lost message because it ought to be interpreted. And people are listening. Hello? People are what? Now, when a word comes in other language by the Spirit of God and the interpretation comes therein, it is equal with prophecy. Now, I didn't say it is prophecy. It is equal because the Bible says, he that prophesies is greater than he that speaks in tongues without being able to interpret. Why? It says because prophecy is for edification. Say edification. So when a prophecy is instilling fear, it is not prophecy. When a prophecy is directing you to a human enemy, it is not prophecy. I said we're going to look at what prophecy is and is not. Are you seeing here? Now, three things we we'll see through scriptures, and I'll tell you where some confusions began to come in. In the Bible, in 1 Samuel, when Saul had lost the sheep, his father's flock, and went some days looking for the sheep or the, the, the lost animals. If you're here, say amen. Am I talking to people? Are you sure? Pay attention, please. Because many of you are deceived over and over again. Now, when the servant said, we've tried some days, he said, there is a man of God. Up in that place that we're coming into, let's go see him, that he may tell us what and what to do. He's a seer. Say seer. Say it again. And then the Bible says, for up to that time, prophets were formerly called seers. And you see, this is where even the prophets who claim to be prophets without understanding scriptures are messing up. Are you see here? He said, for they were formerly called seers. Now, Moses is called the prophet of God. Hello? Abraham never prophesied. Abraham never foretold visions. But he was called the prophet of God. Why? I think is it Hosea says, and by a prophet 
So you understand what prophets, what the ministry of a prophet. He said the land was divided before them. By prophets, it was subdued. By prophets, they were brought in. Hello? Are you sitting here? If you're here, say amen. What does that suggest to you? Hello? The question then is, what is the ministry of the prophet like Moses? He said that I may hear words from God and teach the people. Are you following me? Now, it says seers. Now, a seer or a prophet, when you use the word prophesy, I started by using the word seer so you understand where I'm coming from. And so I'm going to show you how these whole things were messed up in our time. Are you here? A seer is one who under the anointing of the Spirit of God or a negative spirit can look into times. They can look into the future or your past. Hello? And tell things revealed to them either by God or another spirit. As long as you can connect to the spiritual and download information that are specific. Are you see here? Specific information. So it can be somebody's name, somebody's family, and all of that. Brothers, that that is not prophecy. The New Testament tells us what it is. It is called word of knowledge. So when someone says, can I prophesy to you? I'm going to do your family's line. He's not prophesying. He's telling you specific information. That is a word of knowledge. It's an anointing. And it should not be taken for granted. And every one of us can have it. That's what the Bible tells you. So you don't need a seer to have it. Listen, it is one of the operation of the Spirit of God that was upon the seer of old that is now upon our lives as Christians. It doesn't make you more anointed. It just only makes your Christian life more effective. So what does that mean? If you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you should be able to tell, you know, um, Sister Sarah was talking with me some days ago, and I told her, I said, yes, I saw this one coming. I saw this one coming. That's why I took this step. I saw this one coming. That's why I took this step. Oh, Pastor, this thing that just happened. I said, I saw it. That's why I took these times to pray. So I was prepared for them. Now, this is not happening to me because pastor is a pastor of a church. This is my personal Christian life. The Bible says a prudent man foresees the evil ahead of time afar off and hides himself. He said, but the, the, the foolish is given as a prey. Meaning, if a Christian does not function in that grace, the tendency that you always be a victim to circumstances is there. How come a Christian is here every time that God has to intervene supernaturally to save your life? How come the Holy Ghost could not tell you don't travel today? And you sat down because he don't travel today. And then you looked in the realm of prayer because some of us have to learn, connect with it through prayer. Some of us have trained our spirit to look beyond. And listen to this. The word of knowledge, the operation of word of knowledge actually is more evident in the life of a worshiper. I'm not dealing with a prophet now, for the prophet is a, it's, it's an anointing. But you can function there to know things ahead of you and see and hear if you learn to keep a spirit that worships without murmuring. That is why Satan wants your heart to be sad all the time. Filled with complaints and pressures so that you cannot connect with the spiritual realms of, of the frequency of the, the spiritual frequency of the Holy Spirit to receive signals in your spirit. Now, some of you are already walking in that operation without knowing. There's what we call open visions and closed visions. 
So these operations can function that way. Not just by hearing alone, but by visions. So somebody said, ah, this thing that happened yesterday. I think I saw it the first day. So you saw it. It was revealed. What did you do? Because you did not know that that was a communication. And you were called to take charge. So you become a victim to what was revealed. Because you don't understand these are operations of the Spirit of God. Why did it come to you in sleep? Because you are so carnal that when you open your eyes, you are so carnal and conscious of this world's activities that you cannot receive signals to your spirit. So the Holy Ghost has to wait till you sleep. If you are young, it's not dream. It's vision. It's called close vision. Are you seeing here? So if that happens to you, pray. Give yourself to fast and say, Lord, anoint my eyes. I want to also see openly. So that while you're looking at a man, you are seeing beyond the man. Are you seeing here? That was, uh, uh, that was one of the anointing that was majorly functional on seers. As prophets. And that's what they call prophets today. So when they finish giving you a word of knowledge, there is no word of wisdom. Sometimes it goes, well, I'm going to explain that shortly. Now, there's no scripture that is expounding anything to you. You're just only getting information about the matters that is brought to you here. And then they tell you the name of Jesus is broken. They are operating in the path. Because now, something has been exposed. They have to deal with it. That's not prophecy. That is why, even after doing all those things, when people do the wrong things, they become victims again. Are you see here? I mean, who else can you understand better? Look at the life of Israel. All their men of God were seers, <laughs> or 99 percent, and yet they were seeing sin. Are you here at all? Yes, sir. But why does God give these operations? It's so that we can live spirit-guided lives that bring glory to our life. Are you see here? And God expects us to know. God expects us to know. Now, I want to show you how God looks at fasting. Because if you cannot see or hear by perception, that should happen to you through fasting. So if you now fasted and prayed and that didn't happen, we need to check you. We'll take you through foundation school again. Are you seeing here? Isaiah 58. Read from verse 2. Lovra kashila brato koske bra akta bra akta zakila. She bra kumsko vradila brato kumish. Sende bra iko krusti bra akto krustish. Give me from verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Are you seeing here? Yet they seek me. Now, listen to this. In prophecy, the word of knowledge or word of wisdom can also operate. If I was to give you a class exam now, I could ask you, read this very chapter and tell me, when it was prophecy, back to the word of knowledge, and all of them. It's very simple. Are you see here? Yet yeah, they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God, they ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in what? Approaching to God. So these people like to go to God. But he said, I want to show them their errors. What is oppression now? Prophecy. Because now, God is exposing to them his mind concerning the matter. Are you seeing here? Well, let's read on. Let me not debate. Verse 3. I hope I can have enough time for this. 
Verse 3, please. Wherefore have we fasted? Can you take it up a little? Uh, some verses are cut off. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Hello? Did you see that? Who is asking that question? He said, another version, version said, they say we have fasted, God said, and you did not see. Was it the little prophets here? Huh? But God expects every one of his children, at least in the place of prayer, to do what? To see. So when a Christian is not going to pastor every time, now, you see, you see, my pastor is not a, he's not a seer. So you now go somewhere and join a bandwagon of confused people because they say this person is a seer. And then they create chaos for you. Because many of them are under influence of demons and they start pointing fingers. And then you leave that kind of atmosphere and you are filled with bitterness and wrath. And God can help you. Because the first kind of people they will always point to you are the people that should not be pointed to at all. Are there mothers who are witches? Yes. But your mother might not even be the witch. Now, let, let me tell you how this operates in the spirit. <laughs> if you are saying, man. If the spirit of darkness operates in a man, did you read what John said in 1 John chapter 5, chapter 4? He said, every spirit that said Jesus is not Lord is the spirit of the Antichrist. He cannot worship God. And so if a demon spirit is talking, he will identify everything as a spiritual force in your life as your problem. That's the force he's going to take out of your life. Everyone who's truly anointed in your life will be spotted as your problem. That's the first thing you will find out. Well, people don't know. Your mother that you know went to church. There is no juju anywhere in the house. There's no time you grew finding this woman to go somewhere. All you knew her was maybe one church to another. And why is she going there? Carry your name everywhere. My children must prosper. All of a sudden, somebody now told you that is the woman. And why, you see, familiar spirits know things. They just communicate with the atmosphere of other spirits and download it into this man's mind. I say, hey, so and so time when your mother said this. <laughs> And you remember there was a day, say, my daughter, this is you did for me. God will judge you, say. Your mind plays quickly because you went. He picks it. Bam! Say, that day, she went somewhere. Say, eh. Say, that became the genesis of your problem. Who is this person they are talking to? Somebody who claims to have the Holy Ghost too. Who said, I must find. You know, people are funny. Because how do you become gullible to such things? I must find the solution to my problem. It's a good opinion. This way they not make a mistake. I will go all out to know what this problem is. Brothers and sisters, it's your Bible. That is where you find the solution. If the Bible is not showing you, be careful what the seer is telling you. Do you hear me now? He said, Why did you say on that day, There is a Christ and there is a Christ? He said, Don't run to the mountain or to the valley with them. He said, For heaven is ocean. Oh, the heaven you're going to seek for from this mountain to this valley, he says, Inside you. You know, let's say this with boldness. It doesn't matter who the pastor is. If any doctrine makes a man the source of your solution to God, that doctrine is questionable. It's questionable. It doesn't matter who is saying it. Pastor, for we decided to know nothing else or preach nothing else. He said, we did not preach ourselves to you, but Jesus Christ and him crucified. The same thing we chose to know nothing else. He 
there's somebody here. There's a presence here. Wave your hands and thank you. Every sickness is dying now in the name of Jesus. Are you still here? You say, how did they did you fast? And you did not what? See. Put your hands in your eyes. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, my eyes are anointed by your spirit. I receive grace to see from my spirit in Jesus' name. Now, I want to be sure you're following. One of the two ways I said, beyond being an anointed minister or prophet to see, or as a seer, or hear, or walk in word of knowledge, what are the two things I said you can do to see and hear? What are the two things I mentioned? Huh? And what? Worship and fasting. Thank you. Now, the quickest of the three of them, there are three actually, or four, when you stay on the word of God, you can transcend. But you see, the quickest of the three of them, or the four of them, is number one, praying in the spirit and worship. And I'll show you why. The Bible has solution. So, if you're somebody who often What's going to happen to you? You're in tune. You're constantly in tune with the Spirit of God. Information flows that way. I see here. Those two keys and confessing of the Word of God, confessing of the Word of God, are tools that kills tension and pressure from your life so that your spirit can be in a a frequency where signals from heaven or from the Spirit of God flows to you without effort. If you don't learn to speak the Word of God to yourself, confessing the Word of God about who you are, when pressure is around you, or what we're speaking in tongues, the tendency to be in signal will be not there. Because you become too conscious of this world and the pressures thereof and lose signals of what God wants you to do to get out of it. So because of that, you will not be seeking some other aid. And because people are too much in a hurry, and they think the situation is getting too bad, instead of growing, say, leave this aside, just tell me something. And then you meet the wrong person, because Satan is a hasty person. The Bible says the righteous does not make haste. So when people are so much in a hurry, they open themselves to error. Are you aware that nothing can be too late for you? Even when men say it's over, it is never late. Because, listen to this, God kept us here. Shout, I'm not a man. I didn't say say it as he shouted. I'm more than a man. Listen, man was kept here on the times, seasons, and time. There are all kinds of times. I see here to experience God's goodness. But you see, time is a law. Time is a law. It is a law that was put in place to work in your favor. Because when you're born again, you're born into a realm that is beyond time. You're born into eternity. In that dimension, there's a higher law because there is no time, you can walk ahead of time to beat time. And you can use that law to correct time and its operations. Are you see here? 
So when men say it's over, you can disconnect and enter that realm of eternity and see what to do to alter this time. Now, in physics, there's a, there's a science of in physics that um, it's called particle physics or some a theory or whatever. It's called black dots. Even science has understood that if you can pass through certain dots, now, if you watch certain Chinese um, series they're bringing up today, do very satanic, they always make it look like somebody died. Maybe some of you have, might have seen it. The person died and reincarnated back in the body or something and finds himself in his past and begins to take advantage of his past, of his, the future he has seen in his past and is correcting everything and is coming. I mean, if you have seen such movies, there's a part of science that believes that. That within this atmosphere, God created dots so that you can penetrate through. If you can cross through it, you make corrections. This is what that has played out already. It will replay itself. And every correction you have made will be affected. Brothers and sisters, it is true. That's what we do as spiritual men with our tongues. Science knows it exists, but they don't understand the oppression of the force that makes it happen. Hebrews 1 4 tells you the word of God puts everything in place. That force that makes everything stay in place, science calls it an imaginary force. Are you see here? Now they can tell you all that they imagine and they discover something around this. There's something about this cosmotic environment that gives a man access. That access is not done from the physical, it's done from your spirit. Because your spirit lives in eternity. That's why when this body dies, you are not dead, you continue. This is what keeps you in time. If this thing drops, the real you who's in it, born into eternity, you're in the nature of God, faces the next phase. You continue in eternity, either as a judged being or as a glorified being, depending on who you worship. Now, God gave us a new life where you're born again. He has given you opportunity to live what you would have waited to die to experience. Are you see here? We now we now operate in it here in this time. That is why we can say, no, this is not the time, and change it. In the realm of the flesh, what we are doing is called a miracle because we are altering the things that are supposed to be to turn it around. One of the instruments is a fossil prayer. Are you see here? That's what you hear me say, pray till you know you have won. When you've altered it, you will know, you will feel the victory. Then when you stand up, you know that it doesn't matter what I'm saying. It's a fixed matter. Everybody will be worried why you're not worried. Over time, you'll find that everything has played out, like you said. You say, ah, he said it. How did he know? I went away from him. I'm not of this world. Are you see here? Listen, I told you this year, you will grow spiritually. And as I'm speaking to you right now, your spirit man has been anointed to hear and see. Shout a living amen. amen. Now, do you think God is glorified when we pile up? I want to see man of God. Pastor, pray for me and see. Don't worry, in this series, we will touch some matters that offend. <laughs> Praise God. I pray we finish this one for your good. These ones, you see these things I'm teaching? They were my class one. At 17, I knew these things already. I'm not joking. So my parents say, you must go to this church. I'll be wondering, how am I going to sit under this man? Yes, he's anointed, but what am I going to be receiving from you? 
I'm eating bone as meat. You're giving me milk. How am I going to be healthy? <laughs> I said, just kill me. Do anything you want to do. But I'm not going back there. I've gone beyond that class. You know, sometimes I wish I could just carry everything I know. I carry it for just say, and God will say, you can't do it like that. Teach them. He who will believe will believe. You know, you see, when our lives have been accustomed to these kind of practices, you go here, go there, receive from here, this one. You are now in your pastor's, you are in church, you know this is where God puts you. You are now looking for which anointing is upon your pastor's life. So that you, the one that is not that day, you are now looking for what will make it up. It's not your ministry, brothers and sisters. He gave us pastors. He said, I will give you shepherds after my heart. So don't look for it. The one he gave you, stay. He said, they will feed you. It is the feeding, the outcome of your feeding that removes shame. The outcome of your feeding is what gives you balance and beauty. Let me ask you a question. If your daughter or son say, because you don't have the kind of car Uncle A has, he's going to look for a new father. The tendency that that child will never grow well is there, true or false? Is it because they will not give him access to the car? Answer me. What would he lack? I want you to tell me. If you think you know, let me repeat the question. If a father, stand up, Pastor Chris, belong with the example, quickly. Come. No, fathers, they can disassociate from fathers. Go. Let's use mothers. Sister Pat, come. Um, come. See you, Nisa, or something, right? Am I right? Ah, thank God. I heard it in my spirit. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name. Praise God. Now, these are two mothers we have in the house. Clap for them. Okay. Um, thank God. The pastor is here. He's one of the media team. Do a teenager. Clap for him. Elisha or Elijah, the prophet of God. And the longitudinal. This boy is so tall. Praise God. Now, um, Sister Eunice, come this way. Uncle, go, go to their middle. Now, Sister Eunice is a real mother. Sister Pat is the bourgeois mother. You get? Now, uh, we can't find her son. Her son is in class somewhere. So, but they are friends. You get? Sister Eunice does not have dish at home. She does not have. Uh, as in, when I say dish. She has Go TV. Do you get? And they are paying the lowest subscription, 25. So maybe only one very good channel they can watch. Uh, hey, Emmanuel, come. Come and stay with Sister Pat. In reality, they're actually best of friends. <laughs> Sister Pat, shit. Let's make it a balanced equation. Now, on this other side, every time he comes to school, he does not have just a PlayStation. He has a workstation of games. His room is a game station. Do you understand? He sits inside game. You know this kind of worship kind. Of, that's what he has in the house. Do you understand? So DSTP is even the list of the matter. He has it in excess. He even has a driver that brings. He has his own personal driver that brings him to school. But this one only has one car, and it's only when mommy has time they pick you and drop you. Do you understand? Now they are both very caring mothers. And they both all know themselves. Now Elijah now gets angry and says, Kai! I am looking for a better life. Now, remember they're in the same school. They met at school. Hello? They met where? How many of you understand why I use that language? They met at school. Do you understand what I mean? That means no matter how bad it is, Mommy has struggled to put you in the same school that this woman can afford to put you. Hello? But the stories of their experiences becomes too intolerating for Elijah. And because Sister Pat is a welcoming mother and accommodating, Elijah say, I've disowned you. That's what America is trying to teach us in the world today. Say, if you don't like your family, go to court. Mommy, get out of my life. Get out of here. 
and come here. Now, he has access to all the games and everything. Right? What will he be missing with all the goodness of this woman that this woman, he'll be missing that this woman can give? I need somebody to answer me. Mother's what? If you say motherly love or motherly blessing, motherly love, wave your hand. Now, are you aware that there are people who can raise other people's children as do is theirs? Huh? Are you aware? But have you also noticed that no matter what love somebody has for you, if it's not from your womb, it's not complete. Do you understand what I'm saying? The same way when you carry yourself looking for a gift that you don't need because you think something is missing, there is something about the connection of grace you never find in That is how many Christians are displaced. They get out of where God has put them because they think, oh, so now, listen to this. There is a condition that will make this woman beat him that this woman will never do. Because out of her love, she will say, if I beat him now, he won't understand. But this one knows that if you like understand or not, the beating will put sense. Are ah, you getting what I'm saying at all? There's a denial that will bring him as the best quality that she cannot deny him. Because if she denies him of that, it will be maltreating or maltreatment. Oh, because she's not my mom. And majorly because she gave the same thing to Emmanuel. But she knew that Elijah, if I give you this thing, it will not make you a man. But she now has to give him just to make the balance. But mommy, two of them are the same children of mommy. Say, ah, mommy, you gave Emmanuel this one. You must give it. Say, shut up then. And you are brothers. You don't have the same parts. That I gave him this one does not mean I should give you this one. I know what you need. You see those little little imbalances? They are growing up to become either wayward or quality human beings. Enough is enough for that. You understand what I'm saying? Are uh, you see here? I uh, said, so are you see here? So say he gives you shepherd who will feed you. It is the outcome of a balanced meal. Eh? That shows you your life. Uh, are you see here? Uh, no. You know, in our church, pastor does not kill witches. I know there's a lot of witch in my family. If pastor is not killing witches in your church, did you take time to understand why pastor is not killing witch? To find out that maybe he's just showing you that let all the witch be there. You are bigger than the witch, so that the next time you appear, they will disappear. And in their midst, you'll be eating chicken and fowl and turkey tail. <laughs> do you understand? And whether they like it or not, they do Ojiko Koreo Toy and fly. In fact, they will fly with their shadows in front of you. You say, Are you here? <laughs> are you here? Welcome. Why are you doing all your thing? You know, there was, a, there was a comedy I saw that made me laugh. I love this so much. This young man, like the mother-in-law had tormented him so much. Is it mother-in-law or auntie? Something like that, one of those two. But it was an elderly woman. An auntie. The guy was a business guy in Lagos. So it's like he discovered that somebody's manipulating his life. He now went somewhere, the dish was where he went to. Do you get? And now went and secured higher power. Do you understand what I mean? So the auntie came back to the house to visit. He said, ah, Auntie, you show up. <laughs> you show up like this. You didn't even announce you were coming. He said, Must I announce that I come? He said, ah, Welcome. So he was drinking. Um, he had a glass. Some of you must have seen it or something. He didn't really left it there. Do you understand? So the woman threw something. You see the fire going. He entered the juice. Our cook goes, ah, mama, I bring you something, no. Take. I held the bottle. As he held the glass, he killed the water. He drank it. Do my look at it. Ah, 
waited some minutes. Oh, could not die. He said, Mama, how are you? Then the woman did like this. Or could it water it down? <laughs> Move and be made. Ta! He will kill it down. Ta! He will kill it down. Then one said, I want to say, Mama, you're not going to go. You say you can't be. Stay back. Now you're not no more your mates. He prepares a table before me. Do you might understand that <laughs> when you meet her power, tell her power. Go submit. Then I saw another one again. I don't know how they pop up on my on one of my pages. I saw another one again. I love so much. That was like some weeks back. I watched it more than five times. It made me laugh. I said, Well, that is real and good. I wish Christians would understand this. A guy, but what I didn't like is that the guy was a poor man. <laughs> a poor village man that he was in the village. Does a bearer sing? Is it a bearer or a wedding sing? One man that looks like a rich chief just sat somewhere. He looked towards where there was food. <laughs> Sent fire there. Pa! The guy would just, how many of you have seen that video? The guy just sat there and looked at, <laughs> what was happening? He would do something like this. He doesn't, he doesn't shoot anything, no. he just like this. <laughs> so I was waiting. The, he saw that they served the woman the food. The guy just touches me. Bah! This guy was like, mm -hmm. that's all. So I waited. Woman, not there. I said, I was happy here. Uncle began to poison everything. When he was done, the man went to meet him. Why did they worry you? He said, The two sisters, they stop him. Are you not a wicked man? When the man found that somebody was that was not making effort, was just watering down all this charm, he ran. Then I saw the same I went to check. I love checking those kind of things. I went to his page. I said, let me see the content here. This is power display. He was eating chicken. One Yoruba man, just native daughter, just got angry. They're eating the same restaurant. Why is he eating chicken? I just said fire. The guy, hmm? He received the fire, chopped the chicken. When he reached the point, he said, you don't tire. <laughs> So if your pastor is not killing witches, you might just have to listen to the message. He might just be showing you what is bigger than witches. So that when the witch find out that nothing is working, come and say, show me your God. Then oh, we should kill them. At the end of the day, the day there is not that pastor not available to you, the smallest of which gave you just wind that should make you sick. The next day we beg to announce, or we regret to announce the sudden passing away who died by strange wind. <laughs> a Christian with the Holy Ghost. Say, it's, it's, not a, it's not a natural death. So we agree. So, so what night did it? It was an attack. What attack? Did anybody hit you? No. It was just somebody that just called your name. Joy. 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 And then your spirit was so weak. Just say, eh, eh. The next thing they are saying, hey, 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 ah, bring water, bring water. Nah, nah, they are calling you joy. It's just good. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. <laughs> so I would never be a victim. Are you seeing here? Interest is funny, but many of us have put ourselves that way. Say, Pastor, I was sleeping. Something just gave me. Ordinary knock that they gave you from space, you are feeling that they carry hammer. Boy! Somebody said, Pastor, I was sleeping. Then they attacked me. I was trying to say, Jesus. I said, Jesus. I just said, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. The day of pressing me, Pastor, my body was getting cold. It shows you how so dry in the spirit you are. Your spirit is so weak and he said that somebody was somewhere sleeping do you know they vex me I speak with English somebody just go like that say go deal with you inside your sleep can't attack you for sleep then you inside sleep you are not in the physical pastor I thought I was dreaming no 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 I'm gonna say the 
my husband beside me, didn't even know I was dying. Pastor, when I finished shouting, I was sweating like a poured bucket of water on me. Oh, you. 